So what is real? And what do we do about it? Moving on to book seven, straight on to book seven, Socrates then comes to what is perhaps the most famous thing in all of Plato's work, the allegory of the cave. And there's no reason for me to go through the details of that. And it's, it's brilliant, it's incredibly influential, but and a lot of people know about Plato's cave and the prisoners in the cave and they're looking at shadows on the wall. And a lot of people know about this. Very few people know why Plato came up with this or specifically what he meant it to express. We are now in a position to really understand the allegory of the cave, and it's obviously a story about enlightenment. It's a story about moving from illusion to truth, from a situation in, one in which one is mistaken about reality into a knowledge of what is truly real. Of course, it is an allegory. Uh, it uh, portrays these prisoners who are in a dark cave who are looking at these shadows on the wall thinking that the shadows are real because that's all they've ever seen. And then, by one means or another, coming up into the light and seeing the originals of those shadows, uh, seeing the objects, the things in nature, which those shadows were simply shadows of, coming out and being able to come out of the darkness, your eyes adjust, and you're able to, um, to, to see what's real. Of course, that's an allegory because Plato doesn't mean that the physical things that the sun illuminates are what's truly real. Of course, this is an allegory for moving up that divided line, going up from the realm of the visible, which is the natural world, into the realm of the intelligible. So the allegory is really for an education in which, com in which one comes to the realization that what is really true, what is really real, are the concepts and ideas that can only be grasped with the mind. 